are live. Hey family, welcome to the Allergy on Thursdays. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on and join us. We apologize for the short delay, but we are so delighted that you have decided to join us for this edition's, this week's edition of Theology on Thursdays. So very excited to have you all with us. Join us, join us, join us. Come on. And we are live. <laughs> Let me turn this down. <laughs> hey, family. Thank you so much for joining. Please do me a favor, and we ask that you would join our digital evangelism team. You are um, officially part of the Destiny Center Evangelism team. Um, we ask that you would like and share, invite someone to come on out and join us on this evening. Hey, Ash, welcome to Theology on Thursday. <laughs> I pray you had an awesome day. Hey, daughter, Essence is on. We miss you. Love you much. Pray all is well. All right. Come on, on, come on in. Y'all got, y'all remember that song? Come on in the room. <laughs> I could technically sing the whole song because Dr. Dwayne is not in this room, okay? I'm not going to do it though, it's okay. <laughs> I pray everyone has had, like I said, an awesome day. Come on and join us for Theology on Wednesdays. Theology on Wednesdays. I'm so tired. Please forgive me. <laughs> uh, at this point, I'm completely probably just, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> All right, come on and join me. Hey, Jasmine, love you so much, daughter. Thanks for jumping on <laughs> for Theology on Thursdays. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are in our uh, spiritual warfare uh, series for Theology on Thursdays. And on tonight, I'm going to take us to uh, another step in the series. I believe that is information that's going to um, bring you to a place of um, heightened awareness. I believe that it's information that is going to um, bring you to a place of continued sobriety. Uh, I believe it's going to bring you to a place of uh, being at a point of competitive edge against the enemy. Um, of course, resting in that place from the finished, place, finished work on the cross, but also from a place of success in everyday life. Um, I had shared that um, on last week that there is just a, a strong burden that I have that I carry um, for successful living where you are living from the inside out where what you produce to the earth is from that place of intimacy with Christ from that place of stewardship of your relationship with Christ from a place of wholeness and intentionality around um, the the plan of God for your life around what it is that he's saying to you concerning the days the weeks and the months ahead and so um, on tonight we're going to take this series just a step further and we're going to um, focus on something that I believe is uh, needs to be on the forefront of everybody's heart specifically in this time as we are migrating through what we uh, pray is the last part of the pandemic I know the scientists have been talking about that we're moving from the pandemic phase into an endemic phase which is similar to what transition then took place with the flu where we're coming out of a place where um, uh, things are being shut down and those types of dynamics but we're going to have to learn how to live with COVID um, uh, and so as we're making this uh, transition, um, it's been a hostile environment, right? And so as we are moving through these places, as we are moving through life, doing purpose, living in community, um, trying to, again, get reconnected to community, it's going to be this uh, topic that we're going to talk about tonight is going to be of utmost importance. And so um, let's, okay, so Theology on Thursday before we jump into our prayer. So I just finished eating with the boys. We had an awesome dinner. Um, at uh, Morisco's, uh, which is right up the street, off of Broad Street. Um, it is a Spanish seafood place, and it is phenomenal. So if you can get there, definitely go. But I have some juice from there. And so this is going to be my snack because I cannot eat anything else tonight. Um, and I hope that you have your snack. I hope that you have your Bibles. Let's jump into prayer and get started. Holy Spirit, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you for another opportunity of communion with you. We thank you for the spirit of revelation and truth. We thank you that on tonight, the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened with truth. We thank you that you are bringing us closer into uh, the extreme, unique, powerful plans that you have for our lives. And we thank you that you have called us to be innocent as doves, yet wise as serpents. We thank you that you have called us to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We thank you that we are seated in Christ in heavenly places, that we are far above principalities, powers, and rulers. And we thank you that as a result of the finished work on the cross, we are um, living our life from a place of victory. Thank you for granting us tools, ideas, strategy, and revelation to live this life successfully 
um, as we engage in this pilgrimage. We thank you that we are in the world and not of it, but we thank you for fresh grace in order to fulfill your plan for our lives and not to succumb to the warfare as a result of who we are in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. you so much. All right. Essence says she has her hot chocolate. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wait. Oh, hot chocolate, sour cream and onion Pringles, high shoes and water. Okay. <laughs> Essence has enough snacks for everyone here for theology on Thursdays. Um, can you all get me a napkin, please? This one right there. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. All right. All right. And so we are going to go ahead and dive in. Thank you so much, Natasha. We appreciate your support. All right. So our topic for tonight or our area of focus for this space of uh, our spiritual warfare series, we are going to be focusing on the heart. So if you are typing, type in. We are focusing on the heart. And if you want a theme, the theme that we're going to use is guard your heart. Guard your heart, guard your heart. Hey, Shante, I love you, daughter. Thank you so much for jumping on. All right, so write that in the chat, guard your heart. So last week we launched from our um, a pretty well-known scripture in Ephesians 6, where it talks about putting on the whole armor of God, oh, excuse me, the whole armor of God. And one of the pieces to that armor that it talks about that we need to put on is indeed the breastplate of righteousness. And um, this scripture really does spin off of the Roman soldiers' uh, um, guard that they would use, um, their armor that they would use to engage in warfare. And so with that being said, tonight we're going to look at the piece of armor that really does protect the soldier's heart. And so it's important to understand that if a soldier was going to go into battle, they were going to be focusing on the head and the heart for fatal blows, right? And remember last week we talked about the importance of making sure that our mind is being renewed. And so this week we're gonna take that thought about this, uh, the symbolism of a Roman soldier who is engaging in battle. We're gonna take that symbolism and we're gonna take it a step further. Last week we dug into the power of renewing our mind. This week we're gonna deal with the heart. If we're looking at places that the enemy will hit for fatal blows, he's gonna come for our mind. He's going to come for our heart. And so today we're looking at guarding our heart. So again, our base scripture, Ephesians 6 and 14, and it says, and with the blessed breastplate of righteousness. All right. Now there's something that's uniquely interesting about the Roman soldiers um, armor. And it is this, that the breastplate only stays in place because it is hooked on to this belt. And if we're, again, taking our cues from Ephesians 6, the belt of truth is related closely to the uh, placement or the ability of the breastplate of righteousness to stay on the Roman soldier. And so what I want you to understand is that truth is so closely tied to the success and the preservation of your heart. I'm going to say that again. If you're taking notes, truth secures your heart. All right. So I don't know if you guys are following me on social media, but um, this week I had actually been studying. And one of the uh, areas or the scriptures that I was studying was Psalms 51 and 6. And it said, behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, in the secret place. you. Uh, and, uh, so in the secret place, you reveal your truth or you give me wisdom in the secret place. And so as we're thinking about who David was as a man of war, all right. David, that's what we know. He was a man of war, which is why he could not uh, build the temple because he had blood on his hands. David was a man of war. However, when it talk, when the Bible talks about David, in addition to the fact that he's a man of war, we hear that he is a man after God's own heart. Okay. And so in that, um, and, and when it comes down to God's own heart, we're talking about uh, his, his passion, his pursuit of the of relationship with God, right? We, I think that David has one of the most um, uh, thorough stories in the scripture concerning his journey, the good, the bad, and the ugly, but through it all, David is always at a place of honesty and transparency <laughs> when it comes down to his heart with God. And the scripture describes him um, as a man after God's own heart. And so I believe if there is a place that is precious to God, 
when we are after him and we are doing so, we're presenting ourselves from this pure, authentic place of truth, okay? Um, and so I wanted to just set that up as the backdrop for us to continue our conversation. Why? Because in order for us to steward our hearts, we have to do that or to, um, excuse me, in order for us to steward our hearts and in order for us to secure our hearts, we have to do that from a place of truth. Come on, if you're writing notes, you're taking notes, I have to secure my heart, all right? I have to steward my heart from a place of truth. And so I want you to take a moment and I want you to think back over the past seven days. So from the last time we were together on Theology on Thursdays, I want you to think about the times that you've had to navigate things that were circling on the inside of you. We talk, um, we joke with Yi all the time because she's like, wait, what's, what is, what's just going on in my heart? <laughs> all right, but I really wanna ask you, I want you to think about the last seven days. We, you know, it's been seven days that we've seen each other. Um, what's been going on in your heart? Have you been truthful with yourself concerning the condition of your heart or how you felt about things? Right? or how you are processing things. So the question is, how well or how um, effective are you in, in being able to identify uh, the truthfulness of your heart? Why is that important, Pastor Cheryl? I feel like you're slow walking us to this point. I'm slow walking us to this point because the easiest access point for the enemy to come in apart from our mind, remember to give us a fatal blow we're going from the model of the Roman soldier is our heart. And so a lot of times we don't realize that we are dealing with a level of spiritual warfare in the area of our emotions or our the affections of our heart because we're not true about what it is that we're navigating through. Come on, I'm going to say that again. And because if we're not true, if we're not walking in a place of truth, then we aren't able to really um, come to this place of being able to uh, present truth or um, give God access to these places of our heart so that he can work the work that he needs to do on the inside of us. How do I know this is important? I want you to write this scripture down, Proverbs 4 and 23. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So again, Proverbs 4 and 23. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. And so with that being said, the reality is, is that if we are going to navigate successful lives, if we are going to navigate um, from a place of truth, if we're going to be successful in the areas of life, we have to make sure that we are setting a guard on our heart. Because every other area of our life will be impacted by our heart. And so on tonight, I want, you to, I want you to take a look at all of the relationships that may be close to you. I want you to take uh, a, a, a um, inventory of how, the, uh, how well you're navigating heart spaces. And I want you to really ask, all right, is truth here? Have I been guarding my heart? Or has it really been a free for all? Okay? And the easiest way that the enemy gets us in the area of our heart is that he will hit us with offense. And what does the Bible say about offense? It says offense will come. Listen, it is a promise in the scripture, all right? There will be always consistent places or opportunities for us to get um, offended. We're always going to be, uh, there's always gonna be something going on that has the ability to cause us to come into this place of offense. And so the question on tonight, and you're like, well, what in the world? How is this spiritual warfare? Because the reality is, if you start living a life full of offense, if your heart gets full of offense, then you will not be effective in the place of relationship. You will not be effective in the place of prayer. Come on, the Bible talks about it. Listen, before you bring your gift, go get the issue right with your neighbor if you have awe in your heart. Come on, the condition of our heart is that important. Important that the Bible says don't even give, go get it straight. And so the greatest place of uh, warfare that is guerrilla warfare that the enemy uses to cause there to be impact in the body of Christ is through the place of relationship. And the access point happens in small moments of offense. The Bible says that the little foxes spoil the vine. That is literally saying that, uh, that, that there's small things that come in and start to eat away 
at the roots of the vine, and before you know it, the tree is dying. And so um, if we're talking about spiritual warfare, we're talking about our lives as believers, a lot of times we do not live up to our best potential because of the warfare that we have going on in our heart. And so on tonight, I'm having these conversations, I'm asking these questions, because from a posture of warfare, you can win by guarding your heart. You can win by holding yourself uh, accountable to a place of inward truth, okay? You can win this warfare in the place of relationships. And we're talking about the body. Why does the enemy come and hit the body um, through offense in, heart, in the heart to uh, impact our relationships? He does that because the body of Christ is supposed to be one. And the body, and when it talks about, when the Bible describes the body of Christ, it says that it's fitly joined together, each joint bringing a supply. And so the reality is, is that if the enemy can interrupt the relationship, he can interrupt the supply. And typically that's coming from secret heart things that you're harboring that causes the relationship or the connectivity to not be as strong as it could be. And so what happens when there is not the circulation or the supply coming to an area of the body, it's going to start to die. It's going to start to mutate. It's going to lose strength. It's going to start sinking and eventually it needs to be amputated. And so if we're talking about the strength of the body of Christ, if we're talking about the strength of our lives, we have to make sure that we're not going to be effective in those areas without putting a guard on our heart. We're not going to be effective in those areas without um, paying attention to uh, uh, what's going on on the inside of us. The reality is, is that um, there, there is um, medical science. Uh, there is science that says that um, harboring unforgiveness harboring uh, uh, offenses actually causes there to be an impact to your health. And I wonder if the open door and the warfare that you're experiencing in your body is because there are things that are going on in your, in your heart, unforgiveness, um, offense, things that have caused your life to be locked up. And so the supply isn't getting in. And so the challenge on tonight is we're looking at our hearts from a place of spiritual warfare. And listen, you got to think about that. What does the heart do? The heart literally supplies blood to the body. The body cannot function without the heart doing what it's supposed to do. Giving the supply, uh, the, uh, the circulatory system is pushed by the heart. And so the reality is, is that a lot of what we're witnessing in the area of spiritual warfare across the body of, of Christ, we may be looking at it like, oh, this person's doing that. Uh -uh, no, no, no. If we peel that layer back, it's heart issues that are causing there to be an impact on the successful uh, uh, posturing of our heart, the successful unity in the body. And so if we're going to deal with spiritual warfare, we cannot do that without effectively dissecting our hearts. And so... On tonight, I'm asking, I'm encouraging you to take a moment to do inventory. Specifically, if you are in a, in a community, specifically if you are responsible for lives, specifically if you are um, at a place where you're experiencing um, um, fatigue in the area of, and listen, this is a love month, so I, I'm okay to have this conversation. Specifically, if you're feeling fatigue in the area of your ability to love, it could be that the enemy is hitting you in the area of your heart. And listen, you may have let the guard down. We have, literally, we have all been there at some point, but I'm sharing this information with you. I'm taking this moment to engage in this dialogue, to come, to bring you back, to uh, bring a refresher, to bring a, a, a heightened awareness to the fact that the thing that you may think does not matter may be the thing that's going to have the greatest impact. And so if we're thinking about a Roman soldier, the effectiveness or the ability of uh, the breastplate of righteousness to guard their heart was based on how tight the belt of truth was. And if they loosened it, then the breastplate would slip, which means that they did not have the level of protection that they could have or that they should have. And so with that being said, I want to ask you to take a moment and tighten your truth. Hold yourself accountable to forgiveness. Come on, tighten that belt. <laughs> Hold yourself accountable to forgiveness. Come on, tighten that belt. Hold yourself accountable to digging offense out of your heart. Come on, tighten that belt. Hold yourself accountable to, accountable to being successful in relationships and community. Tighten that belt. Be truthful. <laughs>
because there are things that God wants to do, but the enemy is taking moments to impact the health of our hearts. But on tonight, I'm encouraging you again to guard your heart in there. Come on, it's spiritual warfare. Keep your breastplate of righteousness on. And so, um, Pastor Cheryl, you talked to us about um, the placement of the breastplate. Um, we talked about how it's connected to the belt of truth, right? Um, and listen, again, it's his truth. He is the spirit of truth. <laughs> I am I am the way, the truth, and the life, right, right, right? And so, um, with that being said, it's his standard of living that matters. It's his word that undergirds the successfulness of our maintaining our heart. And so, and so uh, Pastor Cheryl, you talked about the placement of the breastplate, but you really deal, didn't deal with the righteousness. The reality is, is that we can only do this type of heart work. We can only be successful in this space of warfare if we're doing that from a posture of uh, standing complete in him. Because listen, Isaiah, I think it is Isaiah 64, um, where it talks about our righteousness is as filthy rags. Like we don't have the righteousness to stand up to do the work that's required on our hearts. I don't know if you have ever tried to forgive someone in your own strength, <laughs> and two years later, they walk by and you're like, <laughs> or let me help you, let me help you. Because sometimes it may not be as, 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 as oh, it, that may not be as obvious. Someone says their name and you just get, mm. nobody else in the room has to know. <laughs> but you know that the mere mention of that person, the mere mention of that scenario, showing you that there's probably some more that needs to be worked out in your heart there. And the thing about forgiveness, and I, I guess we're gonna talk about this tonight a little bit more than I anticipated, but the thing about forgiveness is that sometimes it is a journey. It's not a one and done. Um, I'm gonna use this example. I know that I've probably said this before, even on Theology on Thursdays, um, but I had fallen down the steps when I was about six months pregnant with baby Duane, and I hurt my knee. And uh, a few days later, it felt like it was okay. So I wasn't limping anymore or anything like that. Um, I felt real dramatically. You know how like when you're an adult and you fall, it's just like extra. <laughs> and so I fell hard, all right? I mean, it slid down the steps, tore my knees up. A few days later, like I felt better when I was walking. I wasn't limping or anything like that. But I went to go reach for something and I leaned on my knee and on the surface, moving, doing dirt, certain things, it didn't hurt. However, when I started to apply pressure to that same area of my body that had been previously injured that I thought had um, the issue had been resolved, I noticed that deeper down on the inside, it was still sore. And so a lot of times we don't know that we need to forget, we need to forgive again, or we need a forgiveness refresher until we start putting pressures on those areas of our life, until we get back into another relationship, until someone asks us questions about the scenario, until we have to start standing up in a place of truth in the area of challenge again. And so on tonight, I'm, I'm pushing on you on tonight, I'm challenging you to take a look again, to see if you need to forgive again, to see if there is additional offense, to, uh, to do the work, uh, so that you can guard your heart. Listen, it's not just from what comes in, because again, the breastplate of righteousness, it's, the, it's this duality to guarding your heart. It's about what comes in and what comes at you, right? Because the, uh, the breastplate of righteousness is going to um, uh, stop the arrows from piercing your body, your flesh, and hitting your heart. But according to Psalms, it says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So again, the heart, it pumps, brings in, and it sends out. It's this duality, you hear me? And so in addition to making sure that you're not allowing things in, you have to make sure that what you produce from your life, from the place of your heart, is well. And so you got to do the heart work. And so on tonight, if you want to win in the place of warfare, you have to win in the place of heart management. Come on, you got to guard that thing. you got to guard what comes in what you allow to stay. You gotta guard what you produce out of your life in it. Come on, there's this duality that is necessary to be successful in the place of spiritual warfare when it comes to our heart. What comes in, what goes out. What comes in, what goes out. And I want to encourage you because I see this. Um, some of you are at a place of um, cardiac arrest where uh, your heart is not pumping out like it needs to which means that the outputs in the relationships that you are engaged in, they aren't getting everything that you could supply because of the warfare that's been waging on your heart. 
And so on tonight, I speak healing to you. I speak recovery to your heart. I speak, I speak uh, healing. I speak uh, the courage to be truthful enough to allow the Holy Spirit to do the inner working of your heart. Why? Because there is an amazing plan of God for your life. You have an amazing supply to those you're supposed to be connected to. There is amazing things that God wants to produce out of you. And the enemy wants to hit you in the place of your heart so that you only have minimum output. Out, excuse me, you only have minimum output. And so I speak to you today and I'm telling you <laughs> that your heart will recover and that these small moments that you spend with God and you get true and you give him this place of truth on the inward part where you really forgive and forgive again, where you really just deal with that offense. And listen, you do that from the finished work, the breast, the breast, breastplate of righteousness. You cannot do it in your own strength. You cannot do it in your own posture. We can only do it in him. Listen, crazy stuff happens. <laughs> and I am telling you, I don't know how people do life without him. I was like, oh, let me go on the island and <laughs> just forget everything, right? Listen to me. It is because of the finished work on the cross. He just paid the price for us to live with a whole heart. <laughs> and out of that whole heart, being successful in the place of stewardship, being successful in the place of spiritual warfare, guarding our heart, what comes in, what goes out, we will come to a place of healthy living. He said that he came that we might have life and that we might have that life more abundantly. I am telling you prophetically that you are coming into the place of abundant living. And listen, it is wealth, it is health, it is prosperity, but it is also internal wholeness. And so listen, we're winning in the area of warfare, in the place of our heart. The enemy will not wear you out with a heart attack. No, 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 not so. <laughs> not so. Holy Spirit has gathered us together tonight to hear his heart concerning the matter. And so our topic for tonight, spiritual warfare, guarding your heart, come back, engage again, steward your heart. It is the will of God. <laughs> and out of this place of healing, out of this place of recovery, you will provide the world the greatest supply. And in that, you will be at the healthiest place that you have ever been. Let me pray for you. God, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being present with us. We thank you that you see all, you know all. And on tonight, we make a conscious decision to bear it all. We say, yeah, we're sometimes easily offended. We say, yeah, we have carried that offense a little bit longer than we should have. Yeah, that breast plate was slipping because our truth was slipping. Tonight, Holy Spirit, we bear it all. We trust you with the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we pray the prayer <laughs> that David prayed, the man of war. We pray the prayer that he prayed. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence. And take not your spirit from us. Do a work on our hearts tonight. We want to live in a place of victory in the area of guarding our hearts so we can produce that which you have called us to be so that we, outside of what we produce, so that we can live whole, abundant lives. We thank you for great victory being our portion. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for what you've done on the cross. We will not live another day under the finished work that you have provided for. Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And so before we close tonight, I want to give you an opportunity to sow. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to sow. Uh, and when you're doing that tonight, I want you to search your heart. A lot of times when it comes down for sowing, we do with the reflex when we get the top dollars. Let me give this $10. On tonight, I want you to really search your heart. Um, what, what's the Holy Spirit saying? Hi, Dr. K. I love you so much. Love you so much. Um, uh, search your heart uh, ask Holy Spirit what is it that I should sow in this moment and again you know I'm a firm believer that if I'm putting seed in the ground I'm naming it I'm putting a demand on it 
And on tonight, I ask you to not just do the research, but ask the Lord what he desires for you to sow. The Destiny Center RVA is good ground, and we believe that there will be a return, some 30, 60, and 100 fold to what you sow tonight. Again, we're gonna have that information up on the screen. No, no, no. Okay, so there's three ways to give. You can give via Givelify at office at the Destiny Center RVA. You can also do that through PayPal at office at the Destiny Center RVA.com. We'll get that dot com on there. And you can also do so via Cash App. So for Cash App, it is the Destiny Center RVA. Okay, make sure you get that RVA, the Destiny Center RVA. We love you so much. Thank you for everything that you do. And I believe that you are coming into the greatest season of victory in your heart. Have a good night. Thank you for joining us for Theology on Thursday.